Braves take game one against the Astros. Three to one is the final. That was great what we just saw there in the ninth inning. Robert Suarez coming in, getting the save. Obviously, there was the conversation today and after yesterday. Suarez gives up that homer to Ramos, went into the McCovey Cove, and it's should the Padres make a change with the whole closer situation. And Mike Schilt, I never thought that he was going to change this today, but it's something that, yeah, we should be talking about. We should be asking because Robert Suarez, he was not the same guy these past few outings that he was earlier in the season. And he was not locating his fastball. But tonight, it was much better. You go back and watch those pitches with that fastball, it was more down. It was not left over the middle of the plate. Um, just the, I think it was Jake Meyer up at the plate there at the end. Myers, it didn't seem like he was very confident up there at the plate facing Suarez, like the, the intimidation thing there a little bit. So it, it felt like Suarez was back tonight. He was there. That was the Suarez that we need. Still, I don't think my answer changes to my question yesterday about should the closer situation uh, be different than what it is. Like for me, I think that the Padres probably shouldn't have a closer, if that makes sense. Like Robert Suarez is the closer regardless of the situation. I don't know if that's really best for the team come postseason time. I think what's best is matchups. I brought it up the other day. Would I rather have Tanner Scott? Now, Tanner Scott did give up a run today, and he left a hanger to Jose Altuve. Um, that first hit that he allowed, I believe, in that inning. But for the most part, he's been good. He's, we know he's a, he's a nasty lefty. Pardon the dryer in the background. Sorry, I didn't know that was on. Um, but let's say it's Harper, Schwarber, guys like that coming up. Would you rather have Tanner Scott face those guys in a postseason game, late in a game, with that lane? Or would you rather have Robert Suarez face those guys? I'm probably going with Tanner Scott in that situation, left on left, with the different pitches that Tanner Scott has. That's probably a better matchup. Now, I haven't looked at the numbers like Scott versus Harper in his career, but that's just an example where it's like, is it best for Suarez? Like, yep, you're pitching the ninth inning no matter what. I'm not so sure about that. But tonight, it was good for Suarez, obviously, to bounce back. Hopefully, he still has that confidence. Um, and yeah, it was, it's still a sick shot every time they do it with the, the intro for him coming in. Anyway, getting to the rest of the action from tonight, Manny with that double, well, Profar came through first. Profar and then Manny in the bottom of the first made it one nothing. Jackson Merrill with a homer in the bottom of the fourth, two nothing game there. And it was 2 1. Scott giving up that that RBI uh, to Jordan Alvarez. But bottom eight comes around Profar with a big insurance run. Felt like a while since he had homered. Um, but he, I keep going back to this. He is so good at hyping up the crowd and getting people excited. Now, of course, you're going to get excited when a Padre homers like that, especially when you have a lead and it just further lengthens the lead. It gives you multiple runs, which is obviously big right now than one run, but uh, his, his pointing, like, this is our house, or uh, I forget why he does that. I think that's what he means when he's doing that, but I love that. That's that's awesome. The bat flip that he had. Merrill, by the way, with the, the I don't know how to describe it, the strut, the swat, he had a bat flip as well. He knew that was out, by the way. Yeah, you throw that pitch pretty much part of the plate to Jackson, and he's going to hit that pretty far. Um, they said on the broadcast, I forget the exact number, but I want to say it was 14 something. It was definitely, I know it was double digits of the 24 homers Jackson has. A lot of them are two center field. This isn't a guy that's pulling everything like Higgy with homers and not trying to hate on Higgy, like use that pet go left field, do it. But in terms of like being encouraging for like this guy being a complete power hitter, having that power in his rookie year. I mean, I know I've said this numerous times of how impressive that is. He's doing it to center field. These aren't, you know, a bunch of cheap homers here. So he homers tonight. Pro for obviously homers tonight. And you Darvish. This, this rotation is in a good spot. This last time around, 
Michael King went five innings, one earned run um, against the Mariners. You had Cease and Musgrove going six innings, no runs, both of those guys in their last time out against Sam Fran. You had Martin Perez go five innings, one run, and I'm going to take that every time out from your fifth starter. And then Darvish tonight, this is obviously his best outing since returning. Six innings, no runs. Didn't have a bunch of strikeouts, had three strikeouts, but he was effective. Uh, I, I loved watching him pitch today. He was efficient. He only threw 79 pitches in those six innings. So if he was built up, maybe the Padres try to send him out there to get a couple more outs or get through seven. Uh, I, I know that Schilt is comfortable with that bullpen, but Darvish was pitching really well tonight. And he was using his defense, got grounders when he needed to. It's a great job from him. Jason Adam, his ERA is 183 for the entire year, his 27th hold on the season. And how many runs has he allowed as a member of the Padres? I think it's like one or two earned runs. One earned run that he's allowed, and it was on a homer. One earned run, a .41 ERA. That's including tonight with the Padres. So another fantastic pickup. I know the Padres had to give up a good amount, but fantastic pickup so far for A.J. Preller there. And, uh, you know, this rotation, having these options, sure, it's going to make for a tough decision come the wild card series when, you know, Perez obviously wasn't going to get it. But to have those four starters and one of those guys isn't going to be tabbed as a starter in that series. I would spin it as, like, because I'm confident in the Padres being able to beat the D-backs. I would spin it as, well, that's a good thing. This guy that wasn't pitched for the, picked for the wild card series, that guy is going to go help the Padres go win game one of the division series. That's how I would look at it. But I could obviously, and I can, yeah, I can see the viewpoint of uh, kind of the chip on the shoulder and use it as a good thing. You know, whoever, if it's Darvish, if it's King, if whoever it is, I, I don't, it's not going to be Musgrove. Musgrove pitching in one of those three games. I actually have a pretty hard time thinking that it's going to be Cease that doesn't get one of those three games. It's going to be, it's, I don't, I, I don't really know who that, that third guy is going to be. And maybe some of you think that it's going to be not Dylan Cease and it's going to be the other three. Uh, that's going to be fascinating to see who ends up you know, getting those three, maybe the Padres don't announce it and all four of those guys make the roster and you just don't announce game three until game three. Maybe, maybe that you don't announce game two until you see what happens in game one. Uh, but that's obviously looking down the road. But my point is it's a good problem to have, to have these four guys like that. And we'll see if Martin Perez ends up having a role come postseason time. But it's just a great problem for Schilt to have, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident in the, the state of this rotation. Obviously, we know the depth that this Padres bullpen has. This is, and I've said this before, this is not a team that any other team probably wants to face come postseason time. There are other teams in baseball that are going to make the postseason, and you're going to look at it as like, that wouldn't be the worst matchup to have. The Padres, I don't think other fan bases are like, yeah, let's we want the Padres. If they are thinking that, you're probably not watching the Padres enough because this team is dangerous. As Padres fans, as we know, who have been watching this team night in and night out. But yeah, just overall, another good team win. You got the starting pitching. You got bounce back there, obviously, from Robert Suarez. You got homers from Merrill and Profar. Manny came through. Luis Arise, a couple of hits. Uh, he struck out tonight, though. That was a big story. It was, what, 140 plate appearances without striking out, which was clearly, obviously, by a big margin, the active record, or the active, the highest streak actively in the big leagues without striking out. And it didn't seem like he was going to strike out because he fouled off like three or four pitches, and some of them were out of the zone. Earlier in the, in the, uh, the at-bat, he was called, a pitch was called a strike on him that was outside the zone. So he kept, he had to expand the zone more anyway at the top of the zone, and he kept doing that. And Arigetti went breaking ball down and in, and Arise, Arise can get the balls out over 
you know, outside on the outside part of the plate, out of the zone, outside part of the plate, up. He can get, but I'm not saying he can't get the balls down and in, but I feel like if you're going to get him out, it's probably on that pitch, you know, on a nasty breaking ball down and in like that when he's looking probably for something up or out, maybe. But uh, what he has done, I mean, he's he's a human, right? Like, I'm not making this to be a, a huge deal, him striking out. It's just, it hasn't happened in a while. It hasn't happened since, like, the middle of last month. So it's notable. Um, what really is more concerning is, and I haven't watched Schultz postgame, is there something for concern? Uh, is there, should we be concerned with Luis Arias? And my answer right now is, yeah, a little bit. because. He slid into home, got thrown out, obviously, and it, it was almost like he thought he was Tatis and then realized, oh, I'm not, because <laughs> he slid and then tried to stop and avoid it. I don't know if he was tr- – maybe he wasn't, and it was just the, the wet dirt, but it feels like he was trying to avoid the tag and just stop the slide, and it, it looked really awkward. And he goes down. I posted the, the clip on Twitter on uh, – just look up Talking Friars and scroll down. You'll see it. Just awkward. And then, obviously, he was sitting there for a little bit, had to walk off, and he continued to be in the game. He was de-aging tonight, not at first. But then he ends up getting a, a hit down the line, and a single would have been totally fine. But he sees a ball go to the wall, and that's probably just his natural in- instinct to be like, no, I'm going and getting this extra base, which he did. But... For me, when it's it's easy for me, you know, not being actually playing, I probably would have tried for second too, like just being the competitor. But me sitting here as a Padres fan watching the game, I'm like, it's okay, Luis, dude. A single would have been fine. It would have been fine. You didn't need to go for two there. It's September 16th. I think this team's making the postseason. I'm very confident in that. You're going to be a huge piece to this Padres team wherever they go come October, right? So you don't need to be stretching it. You know you're hurt on that knee. You do not need to be running as fast as you can, 100% going to second base like that. You don't need to be doing that. Uh, But he did it, and he comes off. We'll see if he ends up missing tomorrow or misses the rest of the series. Uh, I I love the standing ovation that he got from Padres fans. Like We understood the effort that he was giving, and we appreciate that. It just... Immediately when he, right when I saw him going to second base, I was like, "You don't need to be doing. Don't do that. Why?" Uh, but maybe the adrenaline, maybe he blocked out. It just kind of took over. Who knows? That's obviously something to look at. If they don't have Luis Arise, and I'm not going to sit here and you know go that far and be like, "Oh, they don't have Arise for the rest of the year." It didn't seem like it was that, but it's just something to look at. You know. Might not be 100% maybe the rest of the year with this knee issue. We'll see. He is playing through that finger thing as well, right? But that doesn't seem like to be an issue right now. So that's good. Um, But yeah, that knee, it's just... If they don't have a rise at 100%, he's not... The good thing is he's not known for his speed and he's not known for like his great defense, right? Right. Like what we need from a rise is for him to be able to be in the batter's box and put together a good at bat and get a knock with guys on base, maybe get a knock. And then maybe a pinch runner comes in late in a game in the postseason, something like that. That's what we need. And it feels like this wouldn't affect that that much. Maybe it would be more running and going full speed running, which would be a good thing. But this is just me speculating, obviously not, knowing the full details on how Arise is feeling and Schultz's comments. But, uh, that yeah, I'm concerned a little bit because I we don't know, you know the full extent. And it's just me reacting to what I saw in this moment, in this game. And we know he's a big part for this Padres team. He's the leadoff hitter. He's hitting 323. He has been going nuts this last month at the plate. Uh, and. You take a rise out of the order. Again, I don't think this is going to be long term, but you t- if you did take him out of the order, then you have David Peralta 
in the DH spot, probably. Not saying that's the worst thing. You know, David Peralta, we saw that he was able to produce while Tatis was gone. But yes, that would be a big absence to have at the top of the order there. And sometimes, come postseason time, all you need is contact. Put the ball in play and something good can happen. And Arise literally is that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But taking that out of it from tonight, overall, another good win. Padres, what, fourth win in a row. And before I leave you, just an update on the standings. The Dodgers, they smoked the Braves today. So Padres, they're still three and a half back in the division. But in the wild card, as of now, they have a three and a half game lead still on a playoff spot. Or excuse me, on the Mets. Three and a half up on the Mets. They have a four and a half lead, I believe, on a playoff spot. D-backs, two and a half back from the Padres for that first wild card spot. Mets still have that third wild card spot. The Braves, a game back of the Mets. So that's where we stand right now. Padres, they continue to be in a good spot. And we'll see what happens the rest of this series. But uh, another another thing, you know, just me being petty here. Robert Torres, Josh Hader's replacement, gets the save with Josh Hader not being in the game at Petco. Pretty cool.